This is USA and China, turn one. United States has 52 IPCs to spend. They're going to spend $4 to advance their technology, $8 on a destroyer, $10 on an artillery and two infantry, and $30 on a, um, aircraft, on an aircraft carrier and two transports. Um, the Chinese, of course, have $12 to spend, and the Burma Road is closed, which makes their purchases pretty straightforward. They're buying four infantry. Uh, of course, the Americans have no attacks this round because they are not at war. But the, Ch Jap or the Chinese do. They will be trying to take back Yunnan and opening up the Burma Road again. So uh, they're coming in with all of the forces from Sichuan and all of the forces from Kwai Chow. So two infantry and a cavalry from Kwai Chow, six infantry, a cavalry, and a fighter plane from Sichuan going into Yunnan. So uh, we'll get that set up on the board and we'll roll it out. All right, in the battle for Yunnan, the Chinese are coming in with eight infantry, two cavalry, and one uh, American uh, volunteer fighter plane. So that's eight ones, two twos, and a three versus four Japanese infantry and a Japanese uh, artillery. So that's five twos. So eight ones, two twos, and a three. They got four hits. So that was very good. All of the cavalry and fighter hit, and they got one of eight for the um, infantry. So that was a great first roll. Uh, five twos for defense. One hit. That's brutal. I guess it's my turn to roll really, really bad this game. So that's one. And these four guys are gone. So basically we re-roll the exact same dice as the first time, except one less one. They only need one hit. And they got three hits. So the territory is taken. Do the Japanese get another casualty? They do not. So very, very, very inexpensive battle for the Chinese. They lost one infantry and took out five badly needed Japanese ground forces. American non-combat movements, they're going to rail the infantry and the artillery in the western United States into, or sorry, in the eastern United States, uh, two moves into the western United States. They're going to walk the infantry and the tank in the central United States into the western United States. They're also going to fly the bomber into the western United States. Uh, the three mechanized infantry in the central United States are going to go to the western United States. Uh, over here in the Pacific, there is actually a fair bit of movement, starting with the Philippines. The fighter from the Philippines will be moving five spaces to Sea Zone 31, which is just uh, off the coast of Wake Island, and it will be picked up there by a carrier that is coming from Sea Zone 10. Uh, the two naval units from Sea Zone 35 are going to go to Sea Zone 23. Uh, sorry, which is right here. Um, the two fighters on Hawaii are going to go to the air base on Wake. And then uh, the various naval forces that we have here. The infantry and artillery from the western United States are going to get onto this transport. And the transport, the destroyer, the cruiser, and the battleship are going to move to Sea Zone 26 off the coast of Hawaii, where they will offload the transport onto the Hawaiian Islands. Um, and as I mentioned before, the uh, American um, carrier in Sea Zone 10 is going to be moving to Sea Zone 31 off the coast of Wake and picking up that plane that shows up. Um, the fighter on the, sorry, the fighter on the western United States is going to go into Sea Zone 10 and land on the carrier that's going to be built there, and one of the fighters uh, from the carrier that was already there is going to stay in the Sea Zone and land on the newly built carrier as well. Uh, in terms of um, Chinese non-combat moves, 
basically they're very very simple um, the Chinese are going to consolidate all of their remaining forces in Kansu so the infantry from Shanxi the two infantry from Sui Yuan and the cavalry from Sui Yuan is going to go to Kansu and the fighter uh, that participated in the Yunnan attack is going to go to Kansu as well so I'll tidy up the board I'll be back in a sec for placement and money Okay, U.S. placements, uh, they're going to build two infantry and one artillery in the eastern United States, and they will, lose their, they will use their central U.S. factory to build a destroyer. Uh, over here on the west coast, they're going to use all three of their production slots to build naval units. They will be building two transports and a brand new aircraft carrier on which they will land the two planes that were in the sea zone. Um, so that's it for the Americans. Uh, in terms of the Chinese, they will be building all four of their units in Kansu. They look like they're making a stand up here in the corner. Okay, um, income adjustments, there is only one. The Chinese got Yunnan back, reopening the Burma Road, so that's a dollar difference. Uh, so on the income chart, uh, Japan goes down from 30 to 29, and China goes up from 8 to 9. Okay, so in terms of income, what that means then is China has $9 base income. Uh, they do get a national objective because they have reopened the Burma Road probably for the last time this game. We'll see what happens though. Uh, so they get an extra six dollars for that. So nine and six is going to be a fifteen dollars to put into their treasury. Um, so fifteen. And then the Americans uh, get fifty two dollars. Nothing changes for them. They don't start collecting bonuses until they're at war. Uh, so they're going to get another fifty two dollars into the American treasury. Okay. Um, disposition of forces will start here in the Atlantic. In Sea Zone 101, there's a transport, a cruiser, and a destroyer. In the eastern United States, there is a fighter, two infantry, three mechanized infantry, one artillery, and two anti aircraft artillery. In the western United States, Focus. Okay, in the western United States, there is a ta uh, strategic bomber, two mechanized infantry, or sorry, two um, anti aircraft artillery, one infantry, one mechanized infantry, one tank, and three infantry. Um, one of them's a marine. I've decided to do um, different pieces for the eastern and western United States, so I'm just gonna go with that. Uh, in Hawaii, oh, sorry, in uh, C Zone uh, 10, there is a fully loaded carrier with two fighters and two transports. In Sea Zone 26, there is a burgeoning major naval force there of two transports, one battleship, two cruisers, two destroyers, and a submarine. In Hawaii proper, there is a, an artillery piece and three infantry. On Wake Island, there are two fighters, and in Sea Zone 31, outside of Wake Island, there is a fully loaded carrier with a fighter and a tactical bomber. In Sea Zone 23, there is a destroyer and a submarine. And in the Philippines, there are two infantry. Uh, in terms of China, they only have units in two territories. In Yunnan, there are two cavalry and I want to say seven. One, two, three seven infantry and then uh, up in the north in Kansu there are um, also seven infantry one um, uh, uh, cavalry and the uh, American volunteer fighter squadron so that is um, US and China turn one UK is up next so we'll see what they do